Hey guys, it's Quana back again with another review and recap of This Is Us Season 5. So glad that you could be with me here today. So let's dig in and talk about one of our favorite all-time TV families, um, the Pearsons, and what we got in these first two episodes of Season 5. Um, now, if you follow the show and the writers on, and also many of the actors on social media, you know that they have been talking about the fact that they were going to just dive right on in to everything that we're facing currently in this country. They were going to dive into the pandemic. They were going to dive into the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, if you follow any of the social media fan base groups, you'll know that there have been a ton of people announcing their disinterest in dealing with these issues they want escapism which um i posted recently that i really felt like that was a false narrative for any of the storylines no matter what the show type decided to tackle because this has always been a show that has dealt with politics has dealt with current events it's a realistic it's set in our time period and it's dealing with a real life not real life but an imaginary but realistic american family and one of the things about this family that is unique is that it is a family that consists of two races and so they were going to have to deal with these issues and i think it would be naive naive of all of us to assume that a show that is so grounded in our world it's not existing in a different timeline of our world it exists in real time i mean and so much so that when the first season aired um from from then till now they have aged the characters exactly one year we while we get a lot of playing with time skips and time jumps and flashbacks and flash forwards in terms of the current day storyline with the big three it started out with them turning 36 and we are now it's been four years we're year five and now they've turned 40 and the way that they've handled time it usually shows us what happened to the family during the summer months so i think it was just very naive and suggests maybe some other issues where we see fans concerned with that there's also been a lot of you know little hullabaloo and stuff about um justin hartley's real life situation that has been going on and how um, that would impact this show in terms of fans of his that kind of followed him from the young and the restless to here and have become fans of his here would they still you know support him with everything going on in his life and I mean I just think gosh people you know let these people live their life and just let them be on screen and us enjoy these characters that they have brought to life please and thank you that being said Sterling K. Brown better not not one one minute think he's going to leave Michelle back there or we're going to have problems, okay? Because I ship them so hard as much as anyone can ship, you know, someone else's relationship because you never know. Anyway, that's enough about my personal feelings about all of that stuff. So let's talk about how the show handled COVID, how they handled the Black Lives Matter movement and George Floyd stuff and everything else like that. And I think they actually did a very good job. These are all real issues that this family would deal with. Like, hello, one of the triplets is a black man. So they would certainly have to deal with, and he's a politician. So no matter what, even if it wasn't that he was black in the real world, he would have to be dealing with these cities that have been in turmoil, right? He would have to deal with that. Also, his wife, his girls, like those are not little like shy little, you know, wallflower, dainty little, you know, roses on the back wall. Like these are very active, engaged women. You know, one of his daughters is LGBT. Um, he adopted a daughter. They, he, this, all of these things exist and would be like definitely, definitely real. In terms of COVID, it was just smart of them to include it because then they're, I'm imagining, I don't know much other than what I've read in the media about how Hollywood is handling COVID and testing and all the different things, but it creates safety because for sure you probably have all of the people who are filming around, all of the crafts people and craft services people and all of the techs 
probably wearing masks full time. And the pretty much the only people who are probably not wearing masks full time are, you know, the directors, maybe some of the assistants and the actors when they're on set. I'm sure everyone has to be taking care of themselves because one person getting a diagnosis shuts down production and halts production and costs them money. So they're going to be taking this extremely seriously. So by keeping everyone at a distance, kind of trying to find creative ways to shoot them in the same room, but also doing things like having Randall have his therapy meeting via Zoom are just smart. It's just smart decisions to help them make sure that they can actually film their show and have a regular full length season. So I just thought that that was really smart how they handled it. Also, um, if you watch the fast flash forward from the end of season four, episode 18, where Rebecca gets lost, um, even that, like the explanation behind that, now there were some little inconsistencies there, but for the most part, they did a really good job of matching all that up. So I thought that was very interesting. So let's go ahead and get into the full recap. I'm gonna try not to be too long-winded with it, but let's get into a full recap of the show before I give you some of my thoughts and theories. All right, so one, disclaimer, I have been extremely inconsistent in my ability to film reviews for this particular show despite the fact that it is one of my favorite shows and I definitely watch it like if not in real time like 8 9 10 a.m if whenever my high school planning period falls usually in the morning I'm usually watching this show Wednesday after it's dropped if I don't get to watch it um, I do not have cable. I have antenna, obviously. Sometimes that's a little wonky. So if I don't watch this in real time. I am typically watching it the very next day, which puts me at a disadvantage because for filming for this, I'm not always able to do it the night of. Sometimes it's the night after that. And then I get into my slumps where I just don't film. I know you don't want to know all of this, but anyway, I just want to explain that I am trying to be committed this year to actually filming all of my thoughts, but just know that these are very well-informed thoughts from someone who has been with this show since day one when they first dropped the first trailer, and I was like, ooh, it looks like parenthood, but then there's like a mystery in the way that they're dropping the trailers. We don't really know how these people are connected connected and it feels like heroes but it feels like parenthood meets heroes and we didn't get really any of that but that being said wouldn't it be amazing and I know that it's completely two different showrunners but if they somehow figured out a way to do a crossover with this show and with parenthood I'm just saying I think it would be amazing if not to have some kind of a crossover not I know we can call it a crossover event because that show is no longer being made but if they had like the Braverman family somehow meet up with the Pearsons I think that'd be awesome anyway so what I'm going to do for my recap is I'm going to actually start in the present and then go into the past and I'm going to clump it based off of couples and then I'm going to focus on whatever the familial relationship is going on for that episode for instance Kevin and Madison we'll talk about Kevin and Madison Kate and Toby um, Randall and Beth Rebecca and Miguel and then I'll t and then I'll go to the past to talk about Rebecca and Jack and then Laurel and William and then I'm going to come back around to Kevin and Randall because that obviously has been the most contentious relationship and the source of most of the family drama for this episode so if that makes sense for you guys that's kind of how I'm gonna break down my recap all right so here we go all right so Kevin and Madison not really not really much here it was a little bit boring but anyway we pick right back up where Madison is telling Kevin yo I'm pregnant and it's twins and he's like I'm all in I'm committed to you and we see them start to spend time together all of this is happening in a very quick montage where we see them start to spend time together. He is investing and he's spending time with her, taking care of her. And eventually they say, hey, this pandemic is going on. It doesn't make sense 
for us to be in two separate locations and have to risk that why don't we why don't I just rent a house somewhere a really big house so we can bunker there and she's just like that's not me that's not the life that I like live I have a house here I'm very comfortable in my house here and it's got a guest bedroom and you can say and it very quickly seems like it moves from I've got a guest bedroom and you can stay till you can stay in my bed with me right here snuggled up and I'm not mad I mean you know pandemic season is cuffing season it doesn't matter that it was warm outside pandemic season is cuffing season so they were all you know snowed up um but literally none of their relationship plays out on screen for the most part i mean it just jumps from pregnant okay move in and now we're snuggled up we do eventually see them arrive at the cabin with the rest of the family and um Madison trips over a bag and lands on her stomach and she panics because she thinks that she may have caused an injury to the babies and maybe she's going to miscarry or something. Kevin takes her to the hospital or the doctor's office that's there. It's, you know, a small town, so there's not much. And at first, you get a little bit of a scare because they only hear one heartbeat they come back in they do a vaginal ultrasound and both babies are well and they seemingly have made it through this very first crisis as a couple and surprise surprise Kevin asks Madison to marry him she definitely is like mm, I'm not gonna hold you to this this was a kind of a crisis thing this is not the it and he's like no I don't want you to let me off the hook for this like I want to commit to you it wasn't Moonlight and Roses, it wasn't Starry Skies, it wasn't Champagne, it wasn't an ideal proposal. It was like, a, oh, I'm scared, Some, I want to be committed to you, I can envision these children. Um, what's interesting is, I'm, and I'm making sure that I'm not like imagining this, but there was definitely a point in the show where she says she doesn't see the children the way that he sees them, like he can visualize a whole future he is becoming Jack Pearson in this moment he can see these kids in the future the met ball games and things like that and she can't envision that and I think that could be a subtle hint to the fact that they won't get married and they won't stay together and maybe she won't even want to raise the children full-time like maybe she would want to be involved in their lives but maybe she would give them custody over to Kevin um I don't know or they could be preparing us for maybe something else happening I just think it's very peculiar that um, all we've known as Madison is like the quirky friend of, of Kate's and there's even like a joke that Randall tells at one point that she's like the only family friend that they have um, but I just thought it was very odd that we didn't see more of their relationship really develop um, we didn't get a separate episode for that of course, this is the show of flashbacks and time skips and things of that nature. So they could always go back and give us a date. But there's just nothing so far that makes me want to ship Kevin and Madison. And most fans that I've, can, from what I can see, when they fell into bed together, it wasn't like a, ooh, this is so cute. This is like was like a, was Kevin cheated? And I hate to say that because we love Madison. She was she cheated as well out of like the storybook romance they were both looking for. And no one can, not everyone can have that. Not everyone can be Jack and Rebecca. But it was just, it's just kind of very lackluster for lack of a better word. All right, so then we got Kate and Toby. Nothing. Literally nothing. We didn't get nothing. They were just props to move things along. The most that we got is that Kate and Toby are down with the BLM movement. Got little baby Jack out there at the protest. She is all in trying to mend things with her brothers, but at the same time trying to be neutral in Switzerland. And that is it. We didn't get anything else with Toby. We got a couple of moments. Um, it was, um, it was one, it was funny because we didn't even see baby Jack, which I mean, I get it again, COVID. 
but we didn't even see baby jack except for like a couple of picture stills every time baby jack was supposed to be around baby jack was sleeping so i just thought that was very funny and i thought also it was funny because toby's the one who guesses that madison or that kevin got somebody pregnant and of course toby just always brings the joy i need for any person who watches this and has connections with dan fogelman other than what i can send him on my twitter to say we need a miguel beth and toby episode like again and we got little nuggets here and there and then we did get that really good beth episode but i need i need the three of them together i need that in my life because it's it was it's just it's just good um r and b randall and beth they were i think like the primary focus in terms of the families in terms of this episode because of everything that was going on has been going on is still going on with black people being killed in this country seemingly disproportionately because of police brutality and they are going to be the focal point because hello randall is a black man and he has a black family so they're going to deal with this and he is also a politician um so he's dealing with multiple stressors and i it, thought it was really nice for them to show like rebecca rebecca beth checking in on him because we know that he has these anxieties and it really gets severe with him um he's seeing he says he's sad but he doesn't feel depressed but it's a lot it's a lot of weight the the dysfunction with him and kevin their 40th birthday everything going on he's not wanting to do the same things he's not really wanting to celebrate he's not really interacting with the family in the same way and he's also watching his girls witness all of this and not really know how to speak words to it um that being said it, that was the him being a politician gives them an excuse or an escape but i did feel like the conversations were a little still kind of glossed over from what at least in my house so with my spouse I have two younger children so they don't know anything but with my spouse with my friend circles like even those of us who couldn't get out on the front lines and protest this has been all that we talked about for months exhaustively I mean to the point where it was like can we just I'm like little like little aunt like little Annie said or was not even Andy it was Tess Tess said, can we please, please look at something else, Daddy, please. And they had to turn the channel to Family Feud and Steve Harvey, who is arguably one of the most, like, least scariest black men in America. And yet his career is taking a little decline. I also thought it was just interesting on, like, a, on, like, a, station note and serious note for them to be watching family feud and it airs on a whole nother station i just thought that was kind of a little interesting but you know who am i i was like y'all couldn't like dig up a rerun or something like something well i just thought about their biggest black show ever and yeah i can't really pull out reruns of that now can they but um but yeah so um, their whole situation we get to see um, um, Deja's boyfriend who I can't remember his name now but I know his name is um, Asante Black I think it's his name he is the nephew of the actress Samara Wiley who played Poussey in Orange is the New Black and she plays on um, The Handmaid's Tale that's her nephew um, and he comes in and there's a great scene great chemistry between the two of them cracking the dad jokes and the you know daughter's boyfriend jokes that was a really cute scene where he talks to him about how he and his dad played by omar epps are handling everything that's going on and how they deal um i thought that was really good just to see like these two black men get together and talk about their emotions and how they cope with their emotions um you know, it was great. It would have been great if they could have actually had like Omar Epps like walk over and talk to them. But it'd be great to get a scene with the three of them and have like that bonding moment later on. I digress. And then with again with Rebecca and Miguel, um, with Rebecca and Miguel, the 
St. Louis um, trial that she was going to do has been canceled due to COVID. They go to the cabin. That is the plan. They've been basically keep camping out in the cabin so that they can be away from people and be safe. And that's when Kate and Kevin have the bright idea that they're going to all go to the cabin together to celebrate their 40th. But of course, once again, Randall is unable to be there. Now, okay, pause from the regular show stuff to say this. I don't know if Sterling K. Brown has like a different filming schedule because he is the biggest, arguably the biggest star on the show right now. Um, and is in terms of doing films and they may have to make some adjustments for him. But it's starting to really bother me to the point where I want someone to notice it and say something and acknowledge it, that he is never with them when they have their birthday. I mean, like, I don't think not a, I can't think of not a one. Because in episode one, when they had their 36th birthday, they were all separate. This was before we found out that they were all triplets. We found out that Kate and Kevin were, and then later on we find out that Randall is also their sibling, so they're not together. And then the very next year, I think Kevin and Randall might have been together. Um, no, no, I'm no, no, that that didn't happen. That didn't happen because the show ended. No, it might have happened. It might have happened. I have to go back and run the run the beautiful bean footage. Um, but they might have been together during that whole escapade with like Kevin getting arrested, which whatever happened with that, I don't know. Um, but I don't think all three of them have ever have in the, the in the the show timeline. We've not seen the three of them together for a birthday, not one time. I don't think. Um, correct me down below in the comments if I am wrong. But that's starting to bug the crap out of me. I'm just saying. Um, Miguel and Rebecca, they're just living life, enjoying things, talking about some apple tree that won't bear fruit. They have to chop it down. And they're going to plant new one. And Rebecca wants to plant a sapling so that it can grow faster. And Toby gives Miguel some advice about taking things one day at a time and just, you know, living for the small things. And so he decides they're going to plant seeds. And it's going to take years. But he's going to say, I've got years with you. Now, we all know, of course, he's got at least a good 12 years because those twins were at least 12 in the flash forward episodes, um, flash forward clips that we got in season four. So we definitely know Rebecca's got some life. She's not about to completely disappear anytime soon. So there will certainly be apple trees um, and apples growing from the vine <laughs> um, for them. But it was a very touching scene. All right, so let's talk about the past storyline. So someone said um, this season is probably going to deal a lot with the mothers and how Randall deals with mothers. And we've been slowly transitioning into him, kind of really dealing with the whole relationship that he has with Rebecca. Now that William has died and now that Dave, he's kind of like dealt with his guilt over Jack's death. So in the Rebecca and Jack storyline, it's just more of what we've seen. It's just really an excuse to give Mandy and Milo some screen time together, which I'm not going to argue with because we love Milo over in this channel. And if you don't love Milo, I'm sorry, I don't know you. Um... But it's just a flashback to her actually giving birth, um, the things that she was asking for. We had seen a, seen a great deal of this, and we kind of knew a lot that happened. Obviously, we knew that she lost the baby. So it more or less is dealing with how he was handling everything, the fear of the unknown, and not knowing how to help her. Um, you know, it's a moment where in childbirth, especially back in those days when men couldn't even be in the room, there's just that feeling of helplessness and uselessness. And so um, really it's more or less driving home the point because it kind of, I think even the trigger for it was Randall saying something on the lines of, he doesn't even know if this is actually his birthday because the idea that he would have actually been born, taken to the hospital, taken to the fire station, then taken to the hospital, and then actually claimed by this family on the exact same day and that he was born is unlikely. And in fact, if I'm correct with the timeline, it while it was fast, I I, I might have missed something, but it didn't seem like it was the same day. Um, because it seemed like the baby had been 
there for a while, like maybe the day before. Um, so we also get the crossover of Laurel and William. Laurel, of course, being Randall's mom and how they had become addicted to drugs because of the toughness of the times and drugs just being poured into the black community. And we kind of get to see their idea and their relationship develop. And we see her struggling with the drug use, but she gets off of the drugs for her pregnancy, but she does not deal with pain well. And she ends up taking drugs in order to deal with the pain because she ends up having a home birth because of the lack of health care. So one of the things that I see a definite not to and perhaps a pivot to in terms of political issues that show tends to pick up here and there is going to be health care especially maternal health care especially maternal health care for black women because there's such a high um fatality for black women we're seeing a ton of black women on my personal facebook timeline not that i know but there's people who connections to like my six degrees of Kevin Bacon's people within my sphere who are losing people and dying in childbirth which should not be and I'm not talking about like young girls who are pregnant at a young age I'm talking about women who should have access to health care do have access to health care are gainfully employed and are losing their lives and you hear the stories of like the Serena Williams is and you think about like all these women who are like wealthy and influential and yet they are still at risk for their lives during pregnancy because they're not taken seriously and so we have here Laurel who never even had a chance to be taken seriously because she didn't have access to health care so Randall was therefore born in that apartment not because of their drug use but simply because they didn't have access to health care and she then ODs William takes the baby he hears them talking about needing to call child protective services and he flees and he takes the baby and takes the baby to takes randall to the fire department and the rest is history he does however eventually kind of come out of his shock he was not on drugs at that time i don't believe um unless we missed something maybe he had taken a a, a hit but i might have missed that and he ends up going back, and I have forgotten that everybody called him Shakespeare back in those times. So when I saw that clip, I was like, oh, yeah, that's not, that's right. Um, he heads back to the hospital. So he had really, it, it was like hammering home the idea that, remember when Rebecca found him, he was lingering outside the hospital trying to see who would have his baby, who had the baby. And that's how she saw him. And eventually that was how she followed him to figure out later on, like, who he was so I could be able to track him down um here we get to see that he lingers to check on the baby he actually goes to the nursery to see that the baby is there he goes to the chapel to pray for the baby to pray for Laurel and he actually it has an encounter with Jack so that vision that Randall had of both of his dads sitting on the park bench under the tree with their you know um having that moment in heaven it's like they had that moment and it was in a chapel and it was so reminiscent of that and I love those layers it's a little you know it's a little cheesy but it's nice the layers that they build into the show um, as it relates to that that was really really a sweet touch um, and then spoiler for the big surprise it's revealed that at least in that moment Laurel didn't actually die but because William fled we don't know if he ever knew where it's i'm assuming i think we're supposed to assume that he never knew that she actually lived and so she ends up coming back because one of the emts did not want to let her go and he kept pumping her and pumping her and it was nice to see like the difference that one person can make when the system fails you lack of access to health care and all of those things that individuals can still make a difference and that one emt not willing to think about her callously not wanting to just write her off as a druggie he keeps pumping on her and she comes back now was this a super 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 soap opera surprise yes but as someone who was a long time fan of young and the restless back in the day due to my grandmama and my mama i was i'm partially here for it i just don't want them to do the thing that a lot of people are thinking they're going to do and we'll talk about that in a second Big storyline, however, was just the tension continuing between Randall and Jack. Um, 
they, you know, the words that they said to each other in season four, Randall basically telling Jack that, I mean, Jack, Lord. Randall telling Kevin that Jack would have been disappointed in him. Kevin telling Randall, it's all of the names. It's all of it. Sorry. <laughs> Kevin telling Randall that the worst thing that ever happened to him was the day that they brought Randall home from the hospital. I mean, I'm just like completely disgusted that these two people could even say these things to each other. But that being said, let's talk about that because I never got a chance to talk about that with you guys. So let me just say this. I will say, and it's not just because of the shade of my skin, that I think Kevin was more in the wrong. Because, and I, everyone has had a moment where you know your parent would be disappointed in you. Like, you made some really bum decisions at that moment. And it doesn't mean that they're disappointed for life. It means in that moment they would be disappointed in you. And I think Randall was completely within his rights to say, Dad would be disappointed in you. Now, he was wrong to bring up the whole thing about, like, Kevin not being there when dad went back into the house and it was his fault that dad died like that was like whoa so hmm. okay scratch that I take back everything I said they were both real wrong real real wrong and it was horrible um but yeah they I mean even to the point where their text messages to each other around Kevin finding out about Madison having twins were very terse was very tight um you just see the lack of communication. And I'll say this, it's not just the lack of communication between the two of them, although that was uncomfortable. It, it's the lack of communication in their family, like the lack of acknowledgement that when these big events happen, you have a blended family and you don't really discuss or address the needs of this. And you just assume that everything is gonna, all things being equal, but they're not. So it just feels uncomfortable to me watching it because it's like, mm -hmm. y'all don't really deal with the fact that it's a blended family and that's going to make dynamics different. Like the dynamic between Kevin and Jack is probably going to be different than the dynamic between Kevin and Tess or Kevin and Annie. Um, that's still their uncle but the relationship might end up looking different if the, the adults are not careful. And so it's all of those layers, it's all of those things that make it kind of go wonky. Now, heading back to the present day storyline, while um, the while part of the Pearsons are at the cabin celebrating the 40th, another thing that happens is Rebecca ends up going to get cake and goes missing and they can't find her. We saw that blended in with the clips where she also went missing in Philly and Randall couldn't get a hold of her. Um, so that played out in this episode. Now, Kate in a panic because she's trying to reach out to Kevin, but Kevin is at the hospital with Madison. She calls Randall who drives about an hour and a half, two hours to the cabin and goes and checks on mom. They find her, thank goodness. And he uncovers the fact that she had taken some kind of antihistamine, some kind of medication, and it interacted with her medicine for her dementia, and it caused a reaction, and she is going to be okay. This was just a temporary setback. Once that leaves her bloodstream, she'll be fine. Um, it really does speak to the relationship that Randall has with his mother. He's watched her. He's he he's been enamored with her. He's studied her. He's fixated on her. So it's nothing for him to coax the events of her day out of her to find out this information. Kevin and Kate could never. They could just never. It's just not the dynamic they have with their mom. Um and they still haven't fully dealt with that and so those we're seeing all of that kind of come back. Um but ultimately, Kevin does thank Randall for coming, which again is awkward because like it's still his mom too. Of course he's going to come. But because there's still all these unresolved things in their relationships, it's just it's just a big old hot, hot hellacious mess. Um, okay, so that is basically what happens. Of course, then the surprise ending of... Um, the fact that Laurel is not dead is the big surprise that was revealed at the very end. So everything else was kind of happening before all of that all intertwined. So let's talk about the pluses in the episode. Randall and Beth, when they have just such amazing chemistry 
and whenever they're on screen together it just lights up um the banter at the beginning about when tom hanks got corona or got COVID 19 that was true to life i do not know what was happening in white households but that was literally like the minute that i was like oh snap hanks got the rona Hanks got the Rona. And my timeline on my social media was a whole lot of black people talking about Hanks got the Rona. This is it. Because Tom Hanks is that guy. He is like America's sweetheart. And if Tom Hanks can get Corona, baby, that's when we were like, oh, we about to die. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I shouldn't. It's not funny. It really genuinely isn't funny. But it was in that moment like a lighthearted, a lighthearted weird but break because we were genuinely scared. Like I remember I was genuinely fearful. Like if like I could not imagine the losses that we have had this year. So when that happened and we hadn't had as many, we had had Kobe, you know, and at the point when Tom Hanks had got coronavirus, um, it might have been it might, I think it was right before um, George Floyd had um, been killed he was literally like oh if Tom Hanks like shut the world down like shut everything down because he's just that person um, he's just that person so I thought that that was that banter around that was really funny Randall saying that Madison was the only friend in their entire family and it's just like yeah yeah speaking of which like the assistant randall has i love him i hope that they find a way to reuse him and bring him back i really enjoy him i'd love to see him interact with the family more um i do think they need to branch out from madison madison she's she was okay in the for a couple of laughs here and there but she's just not that engaging she's just not a blot of me like uh, okay yeah um and so there's way more interesting characters and there's so many characters that they have left behind and that we haven't gotten storylines from or included into the mix um people who they've just completely abandoned the storylines for them like what that when was the last time when we heard anybody talk about nikki what is going on with nikki we know nikki's still living or he should be because he was in the the house in the rebuilt house dream house in the future but there's just so much Toby and Kate guessing that Kevin had gotten someone pregnant. That was funny. Um, I am such a bonehead right now because I cannot remember who plays um, the actor who plays Kate's neighbor, but I adore him. I I need him during during the COVID situation. That guy, and you've got a pandemic. I need that. That is the kind of humor that I I know I'm going to need. Um, the things that didn't go well. The surprise ending. I would just almost rather not. But I'm going to tell you my prediction for that in just a moment. I almost would just rather not. Also didn't necessarily need the Jack and Rebecca scenes. Because like again we had already gotten so much of that. I think they could have shortened it enough. Just a smidgen. Um, but I think they also are probably trying to use Mandy more as much as they can because if you weren't aware she is with child so they're probably trying to get as much screen time in with her trying to write her a big moment so that she can finally get an Emmy because this woman has been not like she there's been some stuff where she should have gotten one and she didn't get one or she didn't get the nomination even um but so that but there was a lot of that that was unnecessary like him running to get the um the radio it's like yeah this is jack of course this is what he's gonna do i think they still could have given us the chapel scene with him and william unknowingly and we all know what william looks like at that point so it wasn't necessary we knew he was at the hospital they didn't need to give us all of that um but i have a i do have a theory behind why they're giving it to us and again I just don't care about Kevin and Madison's relationship. I'm sorry. I just don't. Um, I just, I mean, I mean, I know Kevin's going to be a great dad to those kids, but I just really, there's just nothing there for me that's just making me want. I, that time that we got with them, they could have gave that to Kate and Toby, and I would have been much happier, much happier. And I'm still wanting 
something more with Miguel and Rebecca. Like, give us their love story. De-age them 20 years and let us see, or I guess 12 years or 13, however many years, because it was like nine, she said, between them losing contact or whatever. But give us that first date. That's the kind of stuff I would want to see. Give us more Kate and Toby, because that's the stuff I want to see. I could care I could care less. I, I don't care about Kevin and Madison. I don't. Okay, I'm not going to harp on that anymore. That was too long. Um, <laughs> but, um, okay, so predictions. <clears throat> so, because they did focus on Mandy, because they did include her in the hospital, because we did get all the backstory line with Laurel dying, but then maybe not being dead, Rebecca being in the hospital and losing the baby, um, and then Madison having the scare with the twins. I think that we're building up to either possibly Madison passing away um, after childbirth or short or somewhere around that, in childbirth or shortly thereafter, to her making the decision to not be a full-time mother and to give the custody of the kids to Kevin. I don't know what that would have to do with that at all, but I, it's just my alternative for if they don't go the route of her passing away in childbirth. Um, but I do think that that could be um, something that we get. Um, or, um, I can't remember. I can't remember what I was going to say. I, it just ignore me. Um, just ignore that. But I do think that that's, we're going in that route. I also don't think that with Randall deciding to fire his psychiatrist and deciding he wants a black psychiatrist, um, I don't think that we're going to get Laurel as the psychiatrist. It'd be really interesting if we found out that he had a sibling that was like a brother or a sister who was a psychologist and then that person being Laurel's child. And Laurel still being dead because one I believe he took a DNA test or something I know he had to hire somebody but he took a DNA test perhaps to try to find his his parent and so I think he would have found Laurel if she had lived long enough to where she possibly could have been in the system so I don't think and I just don't want I don't want that to be the cure-all like okay now I finally have a parent who's alive like a natural born. I don't want that to be the cure. I would rather him exist in this place where he's made peace with the parents that he had. He has made peace with what happened to his mom because he had no control over that. And he made peace with William. I like that place. I don't want them. But it would be interesting dynamic if they gave him a sibling. And we found out that, that through him finding this new doctor or what have you. Um, the other thing that I think is interesting when you go back and watch the flash forward from episode, um, episode 18, season four, I think, um, I think it's interesting when you talk about Kate, um, Kate not being in the episode, Toby, them needing to call Toby, them telling Toby, um, t Toby telling them thanks for calling me as though he was not invited and then saying that it was a noting that Kevin's house was a big house is pretty significant and so I think that we definitely could be building up to either a Kate is dead in the future situation or Kate and Toby have gotten a divorce um with them talking about adopting I feel like this is going to be the catalyst for a lot of that because perhaps he wants to, is the one who's really excited about adopting and perhaps she's going to end up shutting down um, those desires or deciding not to go that route after they've gone through the process of getting kind of like close to this child. So I think that that could be an interesting place where they could take this, but I do think that there's something to be said about the fact that he acknowledged, it's almost as though, unless they've just moved in that house, unless the house is just recently done, and I guess I could kind of see that. I guess I could kind of see them doing something like that where all of this is just like a red herring and the house was just recently built and that's why Toby hadn't seen it. And another thing that I noticed, it is 12 years in the future. Now, Jack is only about two right now in the timeline. So in the timeline where we see Jack as an adult, that is 
even further in the future and his grandmother is dead because Jack is only maybe about 14 or 15 at the point where they are surrounding um, Rebecca's deathbed pres presumably um, Tess oh my gosh please the actress who plays adult Tess please give her an episode when I tell you they need to be testing the DNA on between her and the actress that plays little Tess because they look just alike it is scary 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 um, but I want to see an episode with her I want to know where Deja and Annie are. It's just so much. It's just all of the different things um, that I want to see. But I don't think, at least my fingers are crossed, I do not want them to give us a Laurel ends up being the doctor. Because how easy is that? And it's not going to take long for her to kind of maybe perhaps uncover the fact that she is his mother so I don't want it to be that easy I want it to be a little bit harder where they have to work for it a little bit more than that um so yeah I mean I definitely think you know obviously Kevin and Randall will make up you know they're not going to stay mad at each other forever but I think it's going to take some time um and I just hope that within the next episodes that we quickly 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 either find a reason to enjoy Kevin and Madison or we completely get an idea that on the horizon that is not the path that we will be taking with them. Um, I thought it was a good episode, though. It was extremely, or two, I had to remember that it's two episodes, which is why it felt so long, because it was two episodes, but they were smashed together. Um, obviously, because of tomorrow night, they're not going to be airing, so it'll be probably another week before we get an episode. Um, that being said, I am looking forward to the season. I think that there were... I think what they have done with the show with COVID and what they've been able to film so far was really well done and they're handling it. I have complete faith in the writers being able to do a good job um, with playing all of these things out in the soon to be episodes and um, I'm probably going to sit down and have to write all of my theories out before we get into like the, even the mid season. and actually do a theory video because I do have a lot of thoughts it's just they're all over the place and it's getting late so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video off thank you if you have stuck around this long for my recap please do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe button down below I could really 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 use some more subscribers trying to get to 100 and I hope that you join me um, next week for another edition of this is us review until next time toodles